Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon. Um, this will be a bit different, shall we say. The uh, tablet does not have split view mode, so I can't do that on the regular camera. And the DU recorder is designed to show the screen, and I have this all set up and I wanted to do it, so... I can either just film it or I can film it with me in the picture and I figure that way you can see my lips moving and see my ugly face and all that good stuff. But um, my unshaven, hairy looking, you know, Dr. Brown look. <laughs> Dr. Emmett Brown. Hey, in Back to the Future, Dr. Brown, in the one scene where they're going back to wherever it is, Paradise Valley or whatever, the original uh, subdivision where Marty grew up, uh, the Browns weren't there yet. He said the, he, he was descended from Von Braun. Obviously, he's a scientist, you know, Werner Von Braun. Is where he uh, his but they they had they didn't move there until blah 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 so his descendants his forebears weren't there yet <laughs> so interesting yeah predictive programming the number of nine one ones in that movie in 1985 is stunning the burning tires going into the theater are the elevens and that the motel or something right there nine one one yeah twin malls pine malls the time is 111 116 turn it upside down 911 and anyway and then they don't exist at, later in the movie the twin pines or twin malls don't don't exist all right so i have all this stuff up here as a crazy idea i got to doing it i thought well this is what it is symbology of the protection and food uh, production and healing sustenance uh, sheltering you know housing um, communication all those things are, are represented here so and I the, I know the Lighting's not all that great, but I have me my original slide light that I have taken so much shit over from trolls, whatever. I think they're pretty well faded out because they're, if you do something to talk about flat earth and put flat earth in title, they'll come in and rag on you. But like I said, if you're doing a YouTube channel, I just got off the phone with a lady that wants to do a healing uh, free, you know, deal, and, and um, you know, if you, if, if you have a YouTube channel, you don't have to put up with that, you know, you can just delete their comment, and it, you can even uh, ban them, block them from posting on any of your videos, and I do that on a regular basis, just because if I go to their channel, and there's nothing there, this channel has no content, no videos, no playlists, they don't follow anybody, it it's called an empty, it's a sock puppet account. They're a non-entity. They could, in a lot of cases, it could be just a, a robot, a computer AI. It doesn't mean it's a real person. People get so upset about that, like, hey, you don't even know if it's a real person. It could just be a little spy bot looking thing, you know, or a spy bot thing, you know, troll, uh, AI troll. And they just troll to cause you grief and irritation and negative, you know, generate negative energy. The trolls feed on that, so don't feed the trolls. Pretty simple. <laughs> so I don't get stressed out about them like I used to. Um, so anyway, uh, I got a phone with this lady, and she's wanting to do a healing ministry, and just you know, pray for that. You know, be blessings on that. We we need that big time healing. So um, I'm going to grab my flashlight here. Hang on. Pause. All right. Now, we're talking about, one of the things we talked about was quality. Um, yeah. Another flashlight. Lantern. 
I, those lights I left on. I somehow or another when they fell or I pushed them down, I didn't turn them off, so I had to put new batteries in them. But this here is the original, the, the slide light. Very proud of the name. Now the two I had mentioned before when I got them, the two that I didn't know, you know, were they going to be exactly like this? Um, or were they going to be a cheap knockoff? Well, both. Um, they're exactly like this, but I'm going to use this. You, you can see what that's, you know, you can see what that's made out of. You, you should be able to see from the, the sheen on it. Okay. I mean, I can look at that and say that's, you know, anodized aluminum, machine grade anodized aluminum. Now I'm going to shine it on those two lights there. Nah, 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 nah. I doubt that. It, maybe on a computer you can see it. But I'll grab that one and bring it up closer. If I can do it with that. Disconnecting too much. Alright. Yeah, let me bleed off a little bit of A wee bit of light so they'll illuminate, illuminate, illumin, illumin. We're the Illuminati. Okay, you see that one? And that one. Anyway, they are exact copies exact copies the um, the COB the COB the surface mounted devices SMDs those are SMDs now one of them they, 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 I don't know if it's the same exact thing but I know those are SMDs surface mounted devices this one has little dots in it this one is more solid but they're also called, uh, or there's a technology that's COB, C-O-B, chips on, chip on board. So, chip on board SMDs, but the difference is, this one, yeah, I picked it up. I got two of them, right? And I, and I put batteries in one, and batteries weren't, and I picked up one of them, I went, oh, I got to put batteries in this. I took it out, batteries are in it. <laughs> it's so light that I thought it was empty, you know, even with, the, it had batteries in it. I couldn't tell. This one is, you know, it's machine grade aluminum. So, other than that, they're they are very similar. And for a difference between uh, thirty dollars and four dollars, don't drop it. You know, um, and the bulbs inside are different. But I'm thinking um, they're they're very equal. Uh, this one is a little bit whiter, purpler. This one's a little bit yellower. The expensive one is a little bit yellower, but they're about the same brightness as far as I can tell. I can mess with them outside, but that's not my purpose tonight. Whoa. The thing I do not like about them is the button is on the side that the flat thing is on. So if it's on... And then you go to turn it off, Or just you can click it, right? Just without turning it off, you can just go a light click. Well, there's no difference then. But anyway, the the surface, the SMD is facing you. Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's like blinding. So that one you have to totally turn it off. And um, as I recall, this one, you can, if I just de partially depress that, yeah, yeah, I can do that all day long. The other one, you have to click it off and then turn it back on to reset. So, all right, lighting, first day of creation.
He always said, let there be light. There's an awesome video about noble gases. Noble gases, right? What are they? Helium, argon, krypton, xenon. Five of them, I think. They, uh, the colors of the rainbow, basically. And they're light, and they go up in the air. And guess what? What are they used for? Lighting. You, you, those headlights you see, xenon headlights, that blind you when they're coming down the road at you. Argon, used for welding and whatnot. But um, uh, Tesla and uh, Lakovsky, George's Lakovsky. George's Lakovsky made a uh, multi-wave oscillator. And he had those gases in tubes. Well, when you get a neon tube, um, a Rife generator uses the noble gases to in tubes, and they they light up different colors. Guess what? You know they're they're different colors. One's purple, one's red, one's yellow, one's green, one's blue. <clears throat> um, my point is, those gases float up in the air, and uh, when they are electrified, they light the sky. God said, let there be light, and there was light. It did not have anything to do with the sun. It had to do with the electricity of the earth. Fascinating. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Look that video up. I'm awesome. Got my laser pointer so I can point to different things. I don't know if you can see. Let me see. Oh, I kind of know. Where am I at? <laughs> nah, I doubt it. Yeah. This would probably be better. Yeah. All right. So to start today's lecture class, may I direct your attention to I'm dispense with the laser? I think. Um, number one, you have the 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 kefir, the kefir. Okay, the writings, including, you know, apocryphal books, and Enoch and Jasser. You know, and uh, Jubilee, Book of Jubilees. Books which are referred to in the Bible several times. Okay, is it not written in the Book of Jasher? So down here, and I'm not going to move this around too much. You have, um, I, I got the uh, 1611 English Bible Code. Work written by a guy that spent his whole life studying the 1611 King James Bible. Um... Just saying, you know, the Bible is, is, is uh, foundational to everything that we're going to be doing and whatnot. Uh, to this, to the kingdom, you know, <laughs> to the kingdom of Yahweh. Um, so just, just so I don't have to bring this back up, but that's that uh, salt generator. And I just put it there for two reasons. One, electricity, free energy. And two, you know, um, uh, to hold the Bible and the thing in place. <laughs> so just a lot of things down there. LED light. Picked up some of those at Bargain Factory. Uh, two bucks a piece. Floodlight. Really cool. The uh, vinegar, blueberry, honey, blueberry repose drink that Nathan Snow makes. Um, I'm going to just knock off everything at this lower down so I can go back up. The uh, uh, health first aid kit for healing. Represented healing. Like I said, symbology is very important. Symbols are very important. Flags and flags and whatnot. You know, like there's a reason that the Irish flag, Aaron Gobra, has David's harp on it, and that that's led them into battle. David was the song, sweet psalmist of Israel, and he sang, and he had a beautiful voice, and he played a beautiful harp that calmed Saul, but he also was a hell of a warrior. Um, power backup box there, sweet potato chips, uh, like just, oh, and I wanted, I said, man, if I had some popcorn, but I don't have any popcorn, and then I forgot that I had gotten some uh, popcorn, that's uh, sweet barbecue popcorn. Boom chick pop. Boom chicka pop. Chicka boom chicka boom. <laughs> um, solar panel right there. Solar energy. Free sunlight energy. So, alright. Coming back up. Uh, behind me right here is a cane for the uh, weak and lame and of heart. And. The, uh, I just watched the ASP 
watch some ASP. If you're thinking about moving here, even where you're at, like I said, watch some ASP, active self-protection, and learn how to cover your ASP, your active self-protection. Cover your ASP. That is a balaclava for cold weather, representing cold weather. The cot standing up is a, you know, sleeping, shelter, rest. Um, and that originally had a, a jar of corn, you know, seed, seed time harvest. And also I was going to say, well, imagine that's popcorn. Popcorn is a comfort food. And when people are under stress, you know, you put popcorn on and you, and you have a good time and it's, 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 it's good. It's, it's healing. It's a emotionally healing. So have bunches of popcorn. Can has popcorn. <laughs> Battery charge there. I just found that. I was thinking about, man, if I had a, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I, I found it. I happened to, it was in a bag. And I went, oh, cool. <laughs> you know, for double and triple A batteries. Now, I just ordered, um, there, there's NIM, nickel metal hydride. They're dangerous. I mean, they're, they're very, be very careful when you dispose of them. Nickel's poisonous. Um, but there, that's mostly rechargeable batteries. And then they went to lithium ion, Lion, L-I-O-N. Now they went to LiPo like liposuction, lithium polymer. And those are the jump, the little, they're so good that that's what the little jump, jump boxes are made out of. You know, they're about as big as my hand, you know, um, power packs. Those are lithium polymer and that's what I like laptop batteries are made from. So, um, healing there, the, uh, Ganoderma coffee, Ganoderma lucidum that I've talked about before, healthy stuff, sweet potato chips, I love them. Oh, they're so good. Heater meals, food for, uh, you know, prepper uh, food or, you know, storage food for getting here or en route. And those retorts are awesome. You know, you can just throw, you can throw 20 of those in a pot of water and cook them all at the same time and issue a meal and everybody be, you know, on their way. And they're, um, they're, I'm not going to read what you're going to grab it, but when the, when you done, the retorts, the bag, the pouches stand up. They're designed to stand up and so you can use them as a water container, you know, get a drink of water with them or whatever. You probably cook water in them, I don't know. Slowly. So anyway, uh, I know there's a bunch of stuff here and I don't want to... Um, I need to like moving right along type thing. <laughs> so, uh, starting at uh, heater meals. On top of that is uh, two bars there, like health bars. But um, this bargain factory place here is... I got the... Um, I had one sitting right here. I don't know what I did with it. I was going to kind of read the ingredients, but jalapeno bar, jalapeno almond bar. Oh my word, they are good. I mean, I kid you not. Seriously, good tasting, crunchy, crisp. I like crunchy stuff. They are crunchy, crunchy, crunchy. And they and they're it's all like pumpkin seed, almonds, uh, sea salt. You know, no GMO, no da 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 da. So. Um, I covered the first aid kit down there. Yeah. Where is that thing? Too low. I did that. Yeah. <coughs> Medical first aid. More people we have here that have no first aid and EMT and whatnot, like Bill and Shirley. <coughs> All right. So anyway. <coughs> um, oh, and the... Uh, it's all decked out on a wheelchair that Bill let me borrow. The wheelchair. Okay, and I, I didn't point that out, you know. I did a, hey, I got a wheelchair from the dawn of existence, you know. <laughs> there have always been turning points where the course of history shifted. Such a time is upon us now. <laughs> yeah, and the worse and the better of a, angels of our very nature, you know, will... There'll be there'll be changes to change the world in such a way that there shall be no going no going back no turning back. Yeah, I do not know. I do know. That's one thing that only changes. I know that victory is possible. It doesn't look like it. I know. We're not seeing the front of the tapestry. We're not seeing God's vision, God's view of things. I I, I see somewhat more of that because I'm just you know, those of you who are polymathic or whatever. But you know, I mean, I I have heard and have been intensely involved with prepping for so long. And I've heard the same story from so many people 
that I have a concept of like, well, if I've if I personally have met a thousand people that believe this, I got to get there and I got to provide as much food and shelter and water and healing for people as possible. I'm just one little tiny speck of dust, you know, in this whole operation. So there's a lot more, I guarantee you. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, just moving right along. I got. What about Susie? She's five. Forty-five. Yeah, get a forty-five, or whatever. You know, get get a nine millimeter if you want. <laughs> Twenty. Ruber ten twenty-two. I told you about that before. Phenomenal weapon. You can learn to shoot with it. You can learn to shoot Army qualification training with that gun. Um, Cold steel Vaquero Grande. Pocket knife went over that before. And the shofars. There is the uh, ram's horn shofar right there. The conch shell shofar, which I love it. It's the most brittle, but... And then, um... Right there. <laughs> behind the gun, behind the rifle, and where you see the green there, the kudu horn shofar. Now, somebody said, oh, those aren't very... You mean taking them into battle. You know, Israel, the musicians always go first. The musicians go first into battle, blowing shofars. A uh, kudu horn, they go want that in a battle, it might get broken. <laughs> A kudu can stick one of them through and has. They found a lion that attacked a kudu and there was near a swimming pool. The lion was at the bottom of the pool with, you know, the pool was, you couldn't really see the lion because it was red, but, you know, <clears throat> one stabbed through the heart and that thing was dropped dead like a bag of, like a box of rocks, you know, like a sack of potatoes. Dead lion. So, they're not totally passive animals. Um, I don't know. The darts are for fishing. Okay, now we get into, okay, the shovel for digging. Everybody, get a good shovel, a real shovel. I would probably at this point, until I find something better, I would recommend either this or the Five Joy shovel because it's so multi, they're, they're different, they're different. It is very multi-talented, um, shall we say. It's a multi thing. The, uh, the other one I would definitely recommend, if, and I haven't gotten into them, I'd love to buy a bunches of them is the Chinese Special Forces shovel. It is uh, the most multi-featured shovel designed as a combination weapon and, and whatnot. Where the Five Joy has all the stuff in the handle. But no, the difference is if you had a fight between somebody with this shovel, the Cold Steel, and the Five Joy, who's going to win? Think about it for a minute. This thing's instantly ready. The five joy would take five minutes to get to put it together, you know, or ten or fifteen, you know. So um, that's like what you if somebody you somebody in the basement they're in a locked room and one guy has a black powder rifle and one has an AR-15. Who's going to win? The guy that fires first, or the person that fires most accurately. You know, I, I have seen people, my brother and I won, but uh, if you took two people. At 100 yards with AK-47s, full auto AK-47s, and him with his bolt-action rifle, who's going to win? Oh, no question. You know, you have two popped heads in about half a second. They're not even going to get their finger on the trigger. And if they did, they're not going to hit anything at 100 yards. It'd be pure luck if they did. So anyway, um, sword. And another sword over here. Damascus steel. Reason it for those going to that some other time. They're matching, unfortunately. This is a big mistake. They're matching. Uh, I ordered one for me and I didn't get it. Someday I need to get it because there's not. Anyway, there's a reason for that. Tomahawk. Pretty good tomahawk. Uh, and then we're going to go into Vipens. Improvised Vipens weapons. Um, the uh, and, and other things too. See that white rod there? That's communication. That is a uh, whip, very nice whip rod. Uh, CB shortwave. I don't know what it is. I don't know what frequency it's geared toward. It'll be, but it's probably a CB from a, probably a trucker antenna CB. Uh, but also, it was cheap. Uh, a dollar two dollars well guess what uh, what is a weapon a weapon is something that can extend the force of your 
you imposing your will on someone else, your enemy. The distance, the uh, rapidity of striking the blow, um, and the range. Okay, so that drastically extends your physical range and can be swung exceedingly fast with a whipping effect at the end. So, like, you know, nunchucks. That is a piece of PVC, you know, that symbolizes water, you know. But it's also a Vipan, a one-half inch, 600 PSI PVC will fire cold steels, 60, 625 caliber darts. Perfectly. Thanks, Deb, for that one. <laughs> she had some, had some darts, paper darts or something made up, and I was like, ooh, good idea. And I went out and got my cold steel darts I had with me, and I'm like, ooh, really good idea. Because the cold steel darts, they have a whole slew of them. They have a bamboo shaft darts, bamboo skewer darts. They have a stainless steel broadhead, yellow or orange cone darts. They've got a stun darts. They've got all kinds of stuff. People fish with them. Shoot the fish and reel it in. Um, gloves for warmth and whatnot, protection from the elements, insulated. I, I just, those were at the bargain factory and they were, for what they are, dirt cheap. I put them on and I was like, oh, these feel so good. The leather's high quality, it's soft, they're insulated, they were, they just felt so good and I just bit the bullet and got them. This was months ago. I thought, well, I'll never wear them, I'll never need them. Well, Guess what? <laughs> Doing firewood, my hands were frozen. I'm like, I'm going to go get those gloves and put them on. Because every time I went out and do firewood, my hands were like getting solidified. Um, improvised weapons. Well, that right there with the black dots is a watermelon knife. It's serrated edge, really nice. And that right there is a sheath for it. So you look at knives like that. Um, I am going to pop this off real quick. Yeah, I've got a whole set of them, but, uh, you know, they're pretty inexpensive at, at a all these Walmart, you know, online, eBay, blah blah blah. But you know, they're really well done. They're uh, the sheets come with them, so they're safe to handle. This is like a tomato knife. It's got tomatoes on it. You know, that one's got watermelon seeds on it. It's red. It's the color of watermelon. In case you get confused, you know, you don't want to cut. You don't cut your watermelon with this. And this was the only fork, the only implement I had here when I got here. That's my fork. So, I mean, I got, I, this last trip I got some. So, that was cool. Um, so again, you know, symbols, you know. Uh, this is what, I, I just see this as being, um, the Ozark Plateau is a place of provision of healing, safety. There will be a place that is safe and warm. Healing water, shelter from the storm. Uh, improvised. That's a cane. But it's a cane with a purpose. If you can see the tip of it. Yeah. Right in the center of the light there. It's angled. And they're made that way. But guess what? Try this sometime. Find one of them. Or find a regular cane and ram it into somebody's... On their collarbone here. You can put them on the ground in a half a second. Uh, when we went to Spike, uh, Bob Spears was one of the uh, Robert K. Spear passed away now, but he had his his job in the military was uh, to master Oriental martial arts. Um, Okinawa started there. Everything, stick fighting. They call there's one thing called the Eskrima stick because it makes you Eskrima. Not really, that, but uh, yeah, a screaming stick. But um, and I asked him why he didn't do it. He, he showed us a lot of moves with it, and I was like, "Why don't you do a kata for that?" And he's, he's just too old, and 
his knees were shot and he just wasn't going to spend the time. But there should be a cane, cane kata. You know, kata it means uh, teaching or form. You know, that's where you do your. Mm. One time I saw a guy at a expo in Denver, and there was a sword there, a, a katana sword, and he picked that up and went through a kata. And I'm here. To, there's nobody around. And they would have been safe, you know, probably he would have sensed them. But um, it was awesome just to watch it, you know. <laughs> but anyway, a cane strikes to the shin, instep, toe, you know, top of the foot, you know, crotch, ribs, neck, temple. You know, you could, with that, that there, that cane net, that's just for me to get around it hobbling around. But hey, that's one powerful awesome weapon camouflage don't see him can't see him can't find him can't can't mess with him I believe now after all these years the house that I saw the underground house which was totally invisible I mean it very was I knew that in in my dream that if they had gone 20 feet to their left they would have ended up looking down over the doorway or fallen it was invisible from above so there's a reason for that drones <laughs> surveillance forward looking infrared um, ground penetrating radar and combined with air Crete, and I just saw in Utah they're calling it ICF if you know what that means it stands for insulated concrete forms well I said why don't we turn that around and do CIF concrete insulated forms in other words insulated concrete forms of styrofoam really really expensive styrofoam blocks two inch thick walls hollow in the middle where you pour concrete in so I was saying, why don't, that's why my interest was in stumble blocks. Why don't we make blocks, make blocks out of aircrete? They'll be cheaper, they'll go farther, and use those to hold your concrete. They has did that. They're aircrete blocks, 14 inches by 8 inches by 10 inches, and just, you know, ready to pour. Do it DIY, build your own house. Stack them up and pour concrete in them. And you can pour aircrete in them, you know, if, you know in certain situations. So anyway or solid concrete, who cares? So the the blue thing back there, it's a kid's toy bow called the Zing, anyway, it's an air bow, Z-Tech air bow, Zing Industries or Zing, where are the, the boxes here? Uh, yeah, Zing, Zing Sports, that's what, Zing Sports, air bow, and it was designed to shoot these, um, the little kid uh, blue thing there. I'll do another video on it. Well, what I did was I'm like, hmm, 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 hmm. Um, can we turn that into a weapon? Probably. So the fishing darts, I can shoot the fishing darts with it. It has it had two uh, things that come together, and these these bulb things they have two little fins coming off the side where you, that's what they shoot them with. Well, anyway, yeah, it could be turned into a weapon. Well, just happenstance at the same time I got. Um, I don't know if you can see it over there, but right about there. You can barely see them. Anyway, I got these little orange things for shooting those darts with. Fairly strong rubber and stuff. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> these Chinese, they made that bow. And they're like, these aren't powerful enough, so we need to have something to beef them up with. I, that's what the other thing is. It, it, it's a perfect, absolute perfect fit to replace the rubber on it with a lot stronger rubber with the thing with the pouch uh, the little pouch trimmed down to shoot those darts that's what it was made for I mean <laughs> I thought that was cool it took me quite a while to figure out how to take it apart disassemble it and everything so um, tent stake there the yellow thing's a tent stake for shelter uh, enlarge the stakes of my tent I prayed that in Colorado we, we lived in a Little two-bedroom duplex, um, growing family, and that verse came to mind, and I found it. I mean, it came to mind. Literally, the verse came to my mind without even knowing that it was. I mean, I probably had read it in passing, but I, I couldn't put chapter and verse to it. So I looked it up, and I prayed that. I said, "Father, enlarge the stakes of my tent." And poof, we went to, uh, you know, two-bedroom, tiny little two-bedroom duplex to a uh, house that had six rooms. Six, like what could be bedrooms, other than a large kitchen, a dining room, a big front room, you know. Yeah, so anyway, we filled that. I filled that with 
stuff. We had a tunnel cave in. We had a cave in in tunnel three. Tunnel cave in in tunnel three. Uh, I packed and loaded into a storage unit for four years. And I still left a lot of stuff behind. Burn your bridges. Cut your losses and burn your bridges. I mean, you're coming here and just make it happen. You know, if you got to burn stuff, burn it. If you got to burn the bridge, burn it. Get here. Time is short. Um, stainless steel clothes hangers, you know, or uh, push clothes pins. Yeah, different sizes. Jersey ordered something. When are they going to get here? I haven't seen them yet. Um, so anyway, I got I got a bunch of those. Heater meals we covered. Uh, the stove that doesn't work. That's the new one that doesn't work. I got it was a replacement for the old one, which is working at present. So I have to take that one apart. And if you if you if you unscrew stuff. Go figure. I don't know. If you unscrew stuff and then put it back together, it works. Bizarre. Irritating. It's getting kind of chilly today. Um, what's up there? Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff up there. Okay. Battery power pack from a cordless drill system. Or that, that company works, the one that has the aero cart. They have like 20, 30 different devices. You know, I've said that before. Power washer, uh, drills, and saws, and lights. I want the work light. Okay, so uh, rechargeable flashlight there. Little white thing is a glow in the dark tab for dark. You know, it'll light up when I get done and turn the lights out. Nah, I'm not gonna do it now. <laughs> Moving right along. Night trial gloves, five bucks for that whole box there at the bargain place. Um, night trial are better than latex and whatnot. Mechanics use them all the time. They're very durable. We use them for uh, processing deer and whatnot. The uh, bidet bottle. Uh, I just saw a link. No, it was in a little, another goofy magazine that came, but you can buy a bidet attachment. You hook it to the toilet behind it and, you, you know, a little hose attachment for cleaning off. Get one, but those are cheap, you know. That thing costs 40 cents or whatever. I don't know. I told Jersey to get some. She did, and, you know, they're, they're here. And I ran across them. That was funny. I was like, what's in this bag? It's not been opened. And I'm like, oh, a little tiny. I just opened it up just to reach in and grab one bottle and pull it out. So I'm looking at the other side. I have never opened this bag. I wonder what's in it. Oh, you know, stuff comes in the mail. I wonder what's in this. I don't know. I have no clue. And when something shows up, I don't know what it is. Uh, pulling through Dean Ng. Read that book. It's awesome. The whole bunch of books you need to read. 1632 by Eric Flint. Uh... Last Centurions by John Ringo, Lights Out by David Crawford. I am going to read that book. It's down there. Can't see it. I'm going to read that book online or on uh, YouTube. Uh, I can't see what that is. Tea, comfort stuff, chocolate, <laughs> comfort stuff, and the uh, corn. Like I said, that kind of was representing popcorn, but then I realized I had some popcorn. On top of that is, it's my sole aid jar when it gets empty. Pitted dehydrated olives with sea salt. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. That would last forever, and if they're not going to, <laughs> I have to get it empty so I can make sole. I have that other jar, too, but I'm gonna make, I'll make two different kinds of sole. That's my excuse when that jar gets empty. It's short, it's squat, it's heavy-duty, it's nice, really nice. Um, I can't see what that is. I should know. Uh, oh, that, that really fancy uh, sea salt, that little t container there with the pyramids. I got to tell you, uh, that stuff is so awesome. They say just you put a little bit in your cooking and it makes all the difference. It's like it's like a, like I said, mystical, what word would you use? Mystical, magical, miraculous. Uh, when salt is in that, that pure essence, they call them... Um, uh, when you do soleil, you have what's called drippings. You know, when you when you have the drippings from salt, um, mother feminine salt. You know, feminine energy. I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's um, very very powerful. So I'm looking forward to doing that. 
And then on top of the salt is, I just looked at it, but I'm looking at trying to figure out what it is from this direction. Ah, funny. It's salt. <laughs> Pink Himalayan salt. So, yeah, I should have the label turned around. Uh, the little forge up there by pulling through, I didn't see that. The little blow forge I was telling you about. And I should have had the uh, marshmallow cooker. I used it to cook hamburgers. <laughs> I made hamburgers. I got them cooked solid enough. Put them onto that thing and just extended it and cooked them right over the burner of the stove and just kind of give them that, you know, charred charcoal, you know, effect, which I really like. So, all right. Uh, oh, tingly gloves. No, shoes. The boots. The upside, up, upright thing there. Boots for protection against the elements. Those are slip-on boots. Go over your boots or shoes, whatever you're wearing. And I got a pair that would fit me. So they're not high top. They're, you know, keep you out of the mucky water, slippy. And you could, you could put some stud gripper things in it. Um, and then uh, behind that, this blew me away. You know, this place had rain jackets and rain suits. Well, you know, I never have bothered to get them because they're just like cheesy, plastic, cheapy looking things. These are tingly. Again, you can see the red behind the um, bottle there, the red writing, and then you can't quite see, there you go, the yellow guy. Yeah, that's a whole suit. Heavy jacket, oh, they're not heavy. They, they do, that company makes stuff light duty, medium duty, and heavy duty, like firemen, you know, but that is the medium duty, and it's heavy, it's really nice. They had a light duty too. And it was three ninety five, three ninety nine, for a light duty full rig like that. I'm like, mm -hmm. in large, extra large, that's six ninety nine, three ninety nine, six ninety nine. I'll go six ninety nine heavier. Buy the best, forget the rest. But in large, three ninety nine, medium three ninety nine. Yeah, uh, that is a chemical biological defense suit. But even better than that is above it is the Tyvek suit with booties, heavy. The feet are heavy. That other pair I got was just um, the same material as the foot. These have this uh, heavy gray stuff. It's really phenomenal. Like $299 uh, with hood. So it's a completely enclosed unit. All you'd have to do is have gloves duct taped to your hands for chemical and biological situation and a mask. You know, And I, I tried to bring, I was going to grab a couple of uh, gas masks and I, I saw the filters and I should have brought just the filter anyway, but I didn't. Sorry about that, Chief. Sorry about that, Chief. So, and behind next to the bidet bottle is the FUD. Women buy FUDs. Female urinary devices. And I ordered some of the gray things that I showed you pictures of. I ordered some of those. I just had to, you know. Um, that That's so that you can... Uh, have a container for your don't waste that urine you know especially in root if you have a juicer and one of those funnels and I'm just you know pee into whatever and you know you'll have water to get here with so don't be stupid listen um, do your own research I don't care if you think I'm stupid right now I'm not deal with it if there's a pandemic this is like the Amish you know they 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 have been told by their great leaders, don't use homeopathy, it's of the devil. It's frequency, it's scientific. Jacques Beneviste, French guy, proved the efficacy and reality of the fact that homeopathy works, like cures like. You got malaria, drink quinine. If you drink a lot of quinine, you're going to get malaria symptoms. You know, If you want to heal smallpox, have a little bit of smallpox. And if you want to heal uh, poison ivy, eat some poison ivy. I've done it for years. I'm completely immune to poison ivy. I can smear it on my face, my hands. Although I did get carried away one time in a wild food walk and I chewed up a bunch of it. Big. You eat the little teeny red leaves in the spring. That's one That's that's one thing. But these were like, I said, hey, is this stuff good? We're doing wild food. I was joking. I said, hey, is this stuff good to eat? So for about three days, I had this like, you know, just tingly, tingly thing on my tongue. I'm like, after the third day, I was like, oh, I know what it is. It was that poison ivy. It, it, it uh, you know, it, it actually, you know, I could feel it. Not much, but I could feel it. 
So, <laughs> all righty. That's everything that I can see. So, all right. And then, um, like I said, this is a, a, a symbology. You know, very powerful in Israel. Uh, we are Israel. Uh, God is gathering His people here. Um, you know, Hebrew. Most a lot of people. I mean, and there's going to be room for other people to be here, help out. And there will be people from all over the world. Uh, that's just you know, a fact. You know, it's, it's already, it already is true, but it's going to be even more true. Like I said, I was telling this gal a little bit earlier that um, Greg that had has had all these dreams and visions. Um, had one of me sitting at a computer with a map of the world in front of me. And there were yellow clouds all over the world. And I would move the cursor and click on a cloud and it would come here. And I'd move the cursor and click on a cloud and it would come here. And so he did his own research. He didn't just tell me like, oh, I don't know, dream me. You know, I don't know what that dream means. But he, he did his research and, he, and, he, and it's true, I verified it. You know, yellow clouds in dreams indicate groups of people. So what he was seeing was that my writing and my talking and my YouTubing and my... You know, and help get this out there. Like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. I'm out. You know, as Richie from Boston would say. But, you know, get the message out there to people. Um, you know, it's... it's uh, where, where people say, oh, you're going to gather everybody to one place and the government's going to come get them. Yeah, right. You know, like, uh, how many armies around the world are there? Is there enough of them? No, they're not. Why do I say that? Because ours is bigger than theirs. We're not just talking. This is the thing that you got to have is sight, vision. I said, you know, the, the tapestry, we're seeing the back of it. We're seeing all the fringes and rags and the tied-off ends and the just f random threads hanging down. It's a pretty, pretty nondescript, pretty blurry picture, but you can maybe kind of see some things. You know, like, well, that could be, a, there's a big kind of brown thing here, and a, that might be, I don't know. And there's a bunch, there's about, there's some vertical work here, and I'm not sure what that is. And you go to the other side, and it's, you know, it's Leonardo da Vinci's the Last Supper. You know, God knows what he's doing. But for a fact, I mean, get a clue. What does Scripture say? What does Scripture say? I wish I could pull it up. You know, I mean, you know, the, uh, um, the split screen. And where is my phone? It's plugged in. Anyway, you know, Psalm 2. What does it say? It said, you know, um, the kings of the earth gather themselves together. They have set themselves against Yahweh and against his anointed, his Christ, saying, you know, we will not have this man rule over us. And really, uh, you call and you call that, uh, you, you came up with that name of, uh, you know, the, uh, what was it, one? League of Nations at first, and then um, United Nations. Oh, okay. And let me know how that works out for you. You know, you're going to gather all your kings together, and you're going to say, we don't want you to rule over us. We're going to do everything we can to stop you from ruling over us. Really? Okay. <laughs> you know, come on. <laughs> what does the next verse say? You know, and Elohim sits in heaven and then laughs. You know, he created this whole thing. He knows that Yellowstone is there. He knows that the New Madrid is there. He knows that every volcano, and he knows every fish, and he knows every bird, and he knows every, you know, every plant and every leaf, you know. And he's been planning for this a lot longer than his enemy has. He created his enemy. Given him rain for a little while, prince of the power of the air, yes, but, you know, he knows what he's doing. And like I said, poem I wrote, I don't remember any of it, but a couple of verses... Dare you think Yah knows less of war than the pagan writer Sun Tzu? The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Do you think that he's going to wage a war with all of his forces in view? I mean, this is a rhetorical question. You know, the answer is no. You know, do you think he know, dare you think he knows less of war than the pagan writer Sun Tzu? He knows more. He does. You know. And, uh, no, he's not going to wage a war with all of his forces in view. Yellowstone's got a purpose. New Madrid's got a purpose. Deal with it, you know. 
Um, if you're east of the Mississippi, get west of the Mississippi. You know, I advise that sometime in the near future. Uh, but, you know, there, there's issues. I, I had a question for like 20 years, several, two or three of them, one being the Genesis 49.10. You know, the scepter shall not depart from Yehuda until Shiloh come, right? But do the whole verse. I'll just give you this clue. Anytime you have verses like that, but take word, every word, and go to the Hebrew, Strong's, if that's all you can do, go to the Hebrew, go to the Paleo-Hebrew, the picture stuff, and write down what that word means, and then use a word for that word in place of the word that's in the Bible. That tells you that Yahweh can bring to pass the end of this world, the end of this age, in a way that nobody, but nobody, has written a book out, foreseen, imagined, or comprehended. He's capable of doing that, and that verse says that. It's awesome. So, another one is, um, I mean, Ezekiel 38 and 39, I just talked to this lady too, you know. He'll cover your land like, hor the horseman will cover your land, you know, like clouds. What is the word for horseman there? <laughs> parash. And the word parash means to open up like a cloud, like a fabric, a parachute. You know. Whoa. Can you say, you know, Russian Antonov 224s and uh, what is the other one? That 120, 125 and 224s. You know, biggest airlift things in the world. They can fly out and dump out, you know, like, a million guys out of it or something, you know. Anyway, pretty fascinating. But the other one, though, I was going to say is uh, uh, interesting in Hebrew. Um, the question I had for, uh, not, not necessarily in Hebrew, but the question I had for 20 years was in Ezekiel. It talks about the fact that the uh, um, there would be a valley where the victors would bury the dead. Okay. And then it talks about the um, fact that it would take seven months to bury the dead. And it would take seven years to burn the weapons. Seven years to burn the weapons. And I think, I think the reason for that seven-year time frame delay might be that, hey, as long as we're going to burn them, why don't we uh, use them as fuel and make wood gas and charcoal, and then we have the uh, carbon monoxide to run our generators, and, and that would extend the span of time of burning that wood. I mean, you can, seven years to make a big pile and light a match, pour some diesel fuel on it, and you burn them up in a matter of seven minutes, seven hours, you know, really, let's say seven days, you know, so you have a lot of weapons, a million or two million or three million or 20 million. You can pile them up and burn them all. But if you use the weapons for something intelligent, not just blow smoke up in the air, like a lot of people are trying to do with their theology and their you know, prepping, blowing smoke up people's rear ends, you know. But to use it, actually use it for something, you know. So that that's my contention. Um, and at one time I was, uh, this was after the, uh, shall we say, uh, 1995, April 19th, commemoration of the, you know, listen to my children and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere on the 18th of April in 75. Hardly a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year. April 19th, 1995. Mm. That's a good day to slaughter people. Let's go slaughter some people. Uh, Waco. No, I'm sorry. Waco was April 19th. Uh, but the Murr building. So because of that and because of some of my connections, um, like, I get this phone call. It was Friday. Mr. Diamond, this is the FBI. We need you to come down here to the 17th floor of the Murrah building. I mean, the uh, <laughs> the federal building. <laughs> and talk to us about a personality that you know. You know. Okay. <laughs> well, that was uh, Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? Monday, yeah. Yeah, my friend got hit on... Saturday, Monday. Anyway, irrelevant. 
one day I got to knock on the door. But anyway. So, uh, to my, I don't know, compliment or whatever, you know, I'm sitting there going like, well, let me see. It could be uh, this guy. It could be Dan Dan the AK Man. It could be Dan Dan the Missile. I had nicknames for everybody. Dan Dan the Missile Man. It could be uh, George. It could be Ralph. It could be, oh, shit. I hope it's not D1. It was D1, you know. But, uh, <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So because of that, some months later, ended up having lunch with, let's say, an alphabet soup character. Well, he seemed like a good guy. I've told you the story more about him and D1, you know. But if you, I'm not going to do it right now because <laughs> it was awesome. But anyway, he's going on. He's saying, well, because he his stick was he had this organization of people that he trusted. Good people, you know, in the FBI, in the state patrol, and in the, you know, city police. And I had one of the lunches was with um, uh, a guy from intelligence in Aurora Police Department. And he said, uh, and you know, and he starts going on. He goes, well, you know, we've got, um, I've got, I've got contacts in Mossad. Like, Pat me on the back, <laughs> like that's good. <laughs> and I've got contacts in the KGB. And then he, he's like going, he goes like, you know, it's weird. You know, he says, where we, where we use plastic or we use metal, they use wood, compressed wood, laminated wood. Just for, they got their own process that we, we couldn't even do. And I went, oh, really? I said, that's really cool because the Bible says that, you know, they're going to invade us using those weapons and we're going to defeat them or they're going to be defeated by God. And um, that it's going to take us seven years to burn those weapons. And I'm here to tell you, his jaw about hit the floor. He was stunned. He was just, because I just fired it right back at him. Like, oh, that's cool. Cool. Good. You know, yeah. <laughs> more more, more fuel for us to burn, you know. Yeah. And that was the last time. I mean, that, that was like, that one trip to trigger. You know, he was like, okay, this guy is out there, you know. <laughs> or we don't need to mess with him or, or whatever, you know. So, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was a, an experience. One day I showed up with my two kids because I used to we go to we you know we go to Project Club we take our kids we go to you know Patriot meetings we take our kids go to militia meetings we take our kids eh, what the hell I'm meeting with the FBI I take my kids you know <laughs> so they were like are you you know serious and I went yeah you got anything to say to me you can say to them you know <laughs> so yeah so anyway. All right, you know, the point is that, you know, God's got everything under control. It really does. Honest, you know. Now, where you fit in personally, you might have a leading. Listen. If you hear a still small voice, listen. If you see a big sign that says, you know, Springfield. This one guy, you know, he pulled up behind a semi and it said Springfield on the mud flap. And that was like a message to him. So, whatever. I mean, it was a pretty cool message because he took it. You know, he was serious. He came down, he visited me. He went down and visited Ken. He came back up, called me and said, uh, hey, let's meet for lunch in Springfield. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I messaged my wife and she's like, I'm like, that's an hour drive here, an hour drive back. You know, she goes, go with, go, go meet him, go meet with him. Don't be stupid, you know. I'm like, okay. So <laughs> I meet with him. He, has, he, take, he takes me out to lunch. Leaves me with three. I don't have it anymore. Three thousand dollars in gold and silver and cash. <laughs> you know, I'm like here, hold this for me in case I come back this way. You know, okay, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah. Uh, protection from elements. These are like gloves that are kind of welding gloves, but they're they're lined with wool. This glove, not this one. This exact type of glove is what I used in Denver, loading and unloading freight. And I had, I loved them so much that I just kept, they would get holes in them and I would just put packing tape around it, strapping packing tape, and more and more and more. And they, they looked like mummy gloves, but they worked, you know, and they kept working and I was good with them. And one guy felt so sorry for me, he gave me a pair of gloves, brand new pair of gloves, and 
the next day, you know, I'm wearing my gloves again. He was like, what's wrong? I said, they didn't fit. They were just junk cheap gloves, you know, but he just, he was doing it because he felt sorry for me. And I'm like, I don't like them. <laughs> I like mine. <laughs> they look like mummies. How about that? What is that? It's a glove, right? It's got rubber bobbies and it's right-handed. Oh, no, it's left-handed. No, it's right-handed. No, it's left. You know. <laughs> Same with the other one. Ambidextrous. But, um... Ansel. A-N-S-E-L-L. Uh, these are kind of special because uh, if I took that Vaquero Grande or one of them swords there and tried to cut through this, I couldn't do it. This is These are Kevlar. Kevlar is protection from cutting and also protection from heat. Uh, my friend John loves them, the forearm ones. I got forearm deals and they uh, for working up around hot manifolds and whatnot. Very, very good. And behind the uh, stove over there is a pair. Of, I just, I'm like, I don't know, five bucks. Oven mitts, three feet long. I mean, they come up past my elbows, just in case it gets too deep, you know, <laughs> or too uh, dirty or too, uh, you know, hot, you know, for oven mitts. Hey, who knows when you're going to be in an M1 tank, you know, loading shells, so, or somebody might need them for whatever, hot, you know, barbecue. I mean, I can't imagine being that. I guess on a big cooker, maybe I could get that hot, you know. But on my heart, they're, they're big monsters. I mean, they're huge, and they actually kind of fit good. So, all right, I've blathered long enough. But uh, symbology, uh, just my take on things. Sorry, uh, you know, I, that's, I just felt led to do this. I'll just put it that way. So, we are creating a new future. And... Like I said in that quote, you know, um, I do not know if victory is possible. Sometimes I wonder. I mean, I wonder if I'm going to be alive. You know, I, I, I am driving myself. I have for years. One morning I woke up and wondered, you know, what's the most important thing I can do between now and whenever the shit hits the fan? And, it, and the answer was like really clear, really loud in my mind was like, try to stay alive because you're not doing a real good job of it right now. You know, you're killing yourself. So, um, hopefully helps come on some day, you know, supposed to, or, 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 uh, I hope the help is, is good help. So, yeah, I've had a people write to me, one guy, and I have, he hasn't written back, but he's, uh, his name or whatever was airborne. So he said, I've got lots of skills. I've got money. I'm like, bring it on. You know, haven't heard back. So I hope they didn't take him out. I could use some manual help here, you know, some physical help, definitely. You know, Jersey's coming, and like I said, that's going to be, a, you know, adjusting and uh, seeing how much this tiny, tiny little farmhouse gets filled up with stuff, you know. So I'm feeling like, yeah, I need to get a a mini cabin, try to get my trailer here, and that needs help on the roof, but I, that, that's one of the things. I think I'm going to tell the guy that I'm buying it from because i got one more payment left next month. I'm going to say... You get it here, I'll pay you. <laughs> if not, no. Because um, he's the only one that has a truck and the attachment. He took the attachment off of the trailer because, you know, he wanted it. So I got the trailer, but I didn't get no attachment to move it with the fifth wheel thing. It's like a little ring disc thing. He's got that, and hopefully he didn't lose it. You know? <laughs> so anyway, yep, need more space. Got, got a good storage in the barn, but it's, you know, it's, just a, it's a barn. You know, it's not secure at all. Garage, mm -hmm, real iffy. The doors on the sheds don't even work. So, I don't know. We'll see. Try to get as much stuff out of here. I gotta, I've gotta. i realized that i got to get everything I've got in here out. Because, you know, or put it in one area, you know, where she can put whatever she's got in here. Because I'm not looking at this as being my place of abode. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to make it as, what do you call it, effective and uh, get as much done as I can, as long as I can, until I can't, you know, and we'll see. So, anybody wants to come out and help, holler. Um, it's going to be, the spring is going to be intense, intense. Lot. I'm just saying over the whole plateau, there are going to be 
many, I'm not even going to put a number on it, hundreds, thousands, millions, could very easily be millions of people heading here in come spring. And then every one of them is going to have a challenge to be ready for next winter. Or if we have a summer or a spring. No, we, we will this year. But next year, who knows? You know, Grand Solar Minimum. Look it up. If you haven't, look it up. Life is changing, baby. So, all right. If I keep going, I'll keep going. And then I, I need to get some sleep, too. Because I, I, I actually got up this morning and intended to do videos. And I ate. And I was like staggered back in bed that was it and I didn't wake up to but I don't know whatever time it is now but I think about six and the gal was going to call me from New York and did so all right another healer wanting to come here and well thinking about it I'm mean, not even really wanting to come here I can't say that kind of thinking about staying there until she has clear direction and gathers many people around her as possible and then you know so that's going to happen a lot too you may be out there you may hear this if you are considering coming here and you're aware that this is where you should go or, you know, questioning whether it's where you should go, then um, consider yourself a leader. You know, if you see people gathering around you, do gather people around you. And time comes, you know, then head here with a whole group of people. You might be somewhere around the world. Spain, Russia, South Africa. Oh, that would be, I don't even want to think about it. If the doors would open up for that to happen, and they should, they will. All right. May that happen. The people that are being slaughtered there daily. The last time they kept records of the num of the numbers of white Christian farmers murdered in South Africa was in the year 2001. Other than that, it's just been smuggled pictures and stories and rumors and it's bad, very bad there. Thanks, Nelson Mandela, you wonderful man. Anyway, people from all over the world, you know, may very well come here this spring. So, yellow clouds, click, 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 click. I asked that, Greg, I said, hey, <laughs> that map you saw me in front of in the computer, was it round or was it, you know, was it a globe? <laughs> You said you saw the whole world on one map. That means it wouldn't be flat. <laughs> anyway. All right. I'm going to go into that more because it's, uh, that's heavy. Phenomenal. Free energy. Remember two things. Water, electricity, free energy, healing energy. The center of the earth is the positive, is the negative terminal. The North Pole is the negative terminal. The Earth is the negative terminal. The Earth as a whole, the, every the landmass is negative. That's your negative terminal. That means healing. Positive is free radicals, pain, inflammation, death. So negative is healing, rest, and this Ozark Plateau is grounded. The Craton is grounded. It's that's why we have tornadoes. This, let me let listen to me. There's a thousand tornadoes every year in America. The next closest country is Canada with a hundred. Guess what, people? Newsflash. They're both in the North American craton. That craton is by far the largest craton on this earth. It is the oldest and largest rock on the planet um, bite my tongue ah! on this plane of existence there is no planet in order to have ETs you have to have a planet ET tacked on the end there is no 
planet. The Bible says the earth is a realm, and you above the earth, the earth and beneath the earth. Those are three levels of existence. So, that's what the Bible says, sorry. You don't like it? Go find something else to read. <laughs> or go find something else to believe, because if you believe in the globe, you believe in a satanic Luciferian construct of imaginary existences that do not exist. There is no outer space. There are no aliens. There are no spaceships. There is no ISS. That is all bogus, malarkey, retarded, bad physics. Bad physics! Bad physics! Bad physics! <laughs> oh. Take a laser. Shoot it across water. Guess what? It's level. <clears throat> so, anyway, off of that one. <coughs> All right, so anyway, this is Jerry Diamond. If you are listening to this, listening, hearing, Ken Lewis used to say, you know, listen and hear, people, hear and listen, you know. If you're listening and hearing my words in your head, in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, and it makes sense, you are the remnant. That's what I'm saying. You know, you are part of the remnant. And yeah, I stole it from uh, John Connor, Terminator. You know, this is John Connor. If you're listening to this, you are the resistance. Well, if you're listening to this, you're the remnant. So, And I am John Connor. All right, I, I kid, but whatever. I'm Gandalf. <laughs> Protector of Middle Earth. Yeah. Not ever. All right. See ya.